Hello, my name is Bert Seelman, and I'm here today to do an interview with a doctor of pharmacy, Dr. Cindy Abercrombie. I'm here today to help talk with her and inform you and make you aware of what pharmaceutical drugs actually do and some of the things that you might incur. Cindy, what kind of experience do you have in your field of pharmacy? I have um, 18 years of experience in my field. I initially went to a private institution for my education and my experience entails working in acute care settings with, in hospitals, assisting physicians with their clients needs. I see. Uh, what I want people to understand today is that there's a lot of different types of problems out there, different things that people relate to. What are the most abundant types of uh, problems that you see if you were to pick two or three right off the top? I see mostly diabetes, hypertension with heart disease and depression. And depression. And tell me, what are the most costly drugs and pharmaceuticals that you see dispensed out there, kind of from the top down, just for a few of them? The most expensive medications are for HIV, AIDS medications, um, antibiotics, and de antidepressants. I see. And when it comes to these, what would you say are the most prescribed drugs that you see actually given out to people on a daily basis? Um, I see for hypertension, lisinopril, for diabetics, metformin, and for depression, Zoloft. I see. And uh, the Zoloft, just uh, as a side moment here, uh, isn't that something that's used for uh, behavioral modification even with children? Yes. And is that the only drug that was actually created or actually uh, developed for children? No, Zoloft was developed for adults. It was, but they do use it for children, do they not? Yes. So we're talking that some of these children that are on uh, behavioral modifying drugs, we're talking about children in their formative years. Have there, any, any, have there been any real in-depth studies to see what kind of long-term side effects that these children might develop where their brains are still forming and their brains are telling their organs to do and send out certain processes? Is there any, any Excuse me, has there been any long-term uh, studies on this that you know of? There are no studies with children. All of these studies are adult-based. Really? I see. So tell me some of the side effects that you might run into with diabetes. Um, with the metformin that I mentioned earlier, the most common side effect is diarrhea that you see in over half the patients. Really? And over half of the patients are getting diarrhea? Yes. And this is supposed to help their digestion and their blood sugar level? It's supposed to lower their blood sugar, yes. I see. Okay, with hypertension, what would be some of the side effects of the drugs that you see utilized there? Most of the side effects with that would be also diarrhea, dizziness, headache, and in some instances, chest pain. Wow. Okay, so we're talking actually more side effects than people might believe, and these are fairly common? Yes, these are the most common ones. Okay, and let's go to uh, antidepressants. What are some of the side effects that you might see with some of the uh, drugs for depression? Around the quarter of the patients get nauseous with some vomiting with the antidepressants as they're taking them. Um, quarter of the patients get insomnia and you see sexual dysfunction, dysfunction with some of the others, yes. Wow, this is very interesting. So you're telling me that you see this diarrhea thing and these stomach problems quite commonly with all these types of drugs? With 80% or more of drugs, you see that as a side effect, yes. Wow, I see. So could you tell me briefly, what does a pharmaceutical or a drug actually do for the person? What is it that it actually does? To put it simply, it eliminates the signs and symptoms of a concurrent disease. Am I hearing you in that I'm hearing that it only eliminates the symptom, it doesn't actually eliminate the disease? No, sir. I see. And so, what does this mean long term? Well, it means that um, the disease is still present, mm -hmm. um, the medication can be more medications can be added to the patient's profile because of new symptoms coming up with advancement of the disease or new medications added due to side effects of 
current medications that they're taking. So I'm going to kind of speak some words out here. I've asked you to show up. I'm not trying to put you in a tough position here, but just for people's sake in general, and you've been so kind to come here and, and do this with me today. So am I hearing that they're getting their side effects eliminated or their irritation so they immediately feel better and they don't notice what was going on, but that the disease state is still continuing and it eventually they need more medications to handle those side effects until possibly they don't even know what all the side effects are coming from? Is that a possibility? Yes. Wow. So let me ask you something. Uh, are doctors doing something to prevent diseases? I know that in the old medical oath, it said that they would prevent diseases and add a lot of dietetic help. Do you see a lot of dietetic help coming and preventative measures from the doctors? That Are they actively pushing this or are they actually being educated more by the drug companies, just in your opinion? I would say no, they do not actively practice prevention. Right. And so, in other words, it's, it's a lifelong thing, is it then? This, are they told that these diseases are lifelong or are they, how, how do they approach this? Once they are diagnosed with these diseases, yes, they are pretty much told they're, they will have them for the rest of their life. I see. So, let me ask you something. What, in your opinion, would be an, is there, in your opinion, another approach? Have you seen or found anything that might help these people to stop using these medications, eliminate these side effects, or possibly even get better? What have you seen? Or what do you do for your health? Well, I've, um, you know, over the course of the years, I've learned about preventative medicine and nutrition. So I see that starting with a basic comprehensive nutritional package, mm -hmm. you know, the patients eat quality foods, add supplements to it, that would help the majority of the patients with their current disease states now. Right, so then what you're saying is, as I've said to a lot of people in times past, that if they were to eat differently, their bodies would form differently, they could then start to actually heal or regenerate some of these processes and reverse them? Yes, the body would actually restore and replenish itself to the point of original origination, yes. So in other words, that is the true meaning behind healing then and what health is supposed to be about. Yes. Wow. So what I'm hearing from you then is that these medications are not a cure at all. They're a sustaining of a condition, but eliminating the side effects or the irritants to these people, but they're actually not getting bettered. No, they're not getting better, and the true underlying condition still remains. So there's nothing really bettering this person. The inevitable is just being postponed, but the inevitable is still going to come down the road. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say that you have a new stomach lining every four days, a new layer of skin every 28 days, and every cell within your body is replaced every 16 to 18 months. Are you going to a doctor who's teaching you dietetic measures? Is he showing you what you need to change in your life to get off these medications? Or do you find yourself on more medications? You have it now from a pharmacist. All I can say is this, it's your health, it's your life. What do you want for your life? Thank you, Cindy, for coming and talking to me. Thank I didn't you. mean to put you on the spot. Thank you very much.